Hey, welcome back to Big Board. Here we go. So we got some interesting stuff going on. Uh, <coughs> I think I'm coming to grips with the the rules a little better in this game. I think I mentioned it's fairly straightforward, but uh, there are some things that are uh, not necessarily second nature. It is just for clarity's sake. It's October twelfth turn we're playing, so we're in the third turn, and you know, we've been taking our time with this. I'm only doing about one turn a day. At the moment, it's the French movement phase, and before we uh, go much further, I'm just going to explain what's going on a little bit and some of the, the rules uh, things that I'm finding interesting slash annoying uh, in the gameplay. So, quick recap: uh, two turns. Uh, that means uh, each side's moved about three times. I think. I think we started on the morning of the tenth, so. We're well, we're about on eight, actually about six, will be eight turns each. Okay, so the, the British, uh, the British, the French really started down to the right of the screen and have progressed upwards and around in the flanking maneuver as we discussed in the first campaign, the first uh, video we talked about coming north and then west. Uh, so we've been doing that. Uh, and Soleil is over to the top left hand side here. So let I should say over this way, and uh, Napoleon and his and Bernadotte and Davo are uh, right here. Uh, and we're impressed hard from behind by uh, Kajitsky. Uh, primarily, uh, he kind of flew the coop from the uh, near Sara here, uh, and so we've got a little pressure coming from behind there. But we're going to try and take him out, and that's one of the first problems that we have is that. Uh, if you leave an opportunity for a full strength unit to retreat, uh, and, it, and even if you receive a, a defender eliminated result, it then goes over into uh, this uh, box where it uh, spends a couple of turns going through a, a cycle of recovering itself, and then you roll for it to see when it come, when it comes back on and, and which uh, leader it comes on with and all that sort of stuff, depending on which core it's in. Okay, uh, so it doesn't come back reduced, it comes back uh, full strength, so the entire unit uh, gets to kind of sneak away, if there's an opportunity to retreat. And so that was one of the first mistakes I made, in the first, one of the first attacks I did was that I retreated, I realized I could retreat, so I retreated the unit, when in actual fact I should have pulled him off the board and then brought him back on at a later date, so that was a mistake on my part. So, uh, so it's very difficult to actually destroy in total a unit at this 600 meters a hex scale. And uh, you know, I posted a question to the uh, to Kevin Zucker, and you know, he's saying it's trying to the, the surrounding concept is trying to get you to consider this as a double envelopment or an envelopment or rolling up of a flank. Uh, okay, that, that's fine. I, I get it. Uh, the other somewhat annoying aspect is, is if you do not have all of your HQ's uh, leaders, these core leaders, uh, close together, you're rolling if they have a poor, if this leader has a poor rating, this is a 4 so it's okay, uh, you have to really, you have to ignore DeVoe's leadership rating or ignore Mar uh, Marat's uh, leadership rating and roll individually for all the units. You're gonna have a much better chance of rolling five or less than one or less for the leader. So, you know, it's, you're spending five minutes rolling dice for everybody unless they're within three hexes. The core commanders are within three hexes of Napoleon, which really then limits your ability to maneuver effectively. I think so. We've got a core, uh, two cores close to Napoleon. Uh, this dude over here has got a rating of 4, so he's okay. Ney is approaching down on the bottom right-hand side of the screen um, and trying to come around and actually reinforce the uh, trouble down here because um, Rochelle came on board and he's got a good command rating and he brought all his forces down south and they're trying to push through here. But there's some strong stuff here. These guys are a 9 combat strength, and you can see that. I don't, I can't see what I'm showing you, <laughs> so I'm just kind of waving my hands around, hopefully it'll work. Uh, but all these other commanders are really weak, so I, I'm rolling the dice maybe 20 times, to be, just to get started for the turn. 20 times, 15 times. Uh, all of these units need to be, if they're not within range, need to be rolled for all these guys. 
uh, all these guys down here, the, the uh, guard units need to be rolled for. And the same for the Prussians. So it's a bit of wristage action going on. It's a little, uh, it's a little tedious. And then you move the units, and then you go into the combat phase, and you have this while well, gee, I'll just, you know, the cavalry can retreat, which is fair enough, and then you have a combat, and then there's a good chance that they can either retreat or come back, so you don't kill anything. So I feel like I'm, I'm rolling a bunch of dice for no effect. Now, having said that, the tactical problem that's to be solved here is really kind of interesting. The, uh, the ebb and flow and the give and take of the cavalry retreating, particularly these vedettes, retreating out of combat to slow down the advance of the enemy. It, it's kind of interesting. And which bridges are you going to blow and which ones are you not going to blow? You know, so we're, we're, we're trying to make a stand here at, uh, at Jenna um, and screen the approaches. So that is in of itself interesting. That's very clearly uh, the French outweigh the Prussians by an enormous factor. Uh, but the Prussians have only lost uh, one division and one reduced division and one vedette. So they've done very well so far. Two vedettes. So, uh, you know, it's interesting. I, I'm not sure that uh, it's something I'm going to pull out and play tomorrow again if I if I were to, you know, finish this and then uh, I'm not going to pull it out again in a hurry. I am going to go and reread the rules and then have a look at the seven days of 1809 and see how that plays and see how different that is. Uh, because I believe there are a few differences in the si in the system there, and we'll see if that makes any difference. But uh, it's a fun game. It's interesting. I think it'd be great playing uh, against uh, another person and having all this face down. I'm trying to keep most of it face down. I just finished these guys uh, in turn, and since they're not attacking, I'm leaving the French face up, uh, except for down in the south. Anyway, that's a, a little bit of a, a catch up on what's going on here.